I've been organizing the shop a lot lately, getting it to a better working environment. And I've had a porter cable drill press, kind of a, an entry level one, I guess you could say. And I've, uh, I've been on the lookout for a long time for a different one. And I finally found it. This one's pretty cool, you gotta check it out. This is the new drill press. Pretty sweet, huh? It's a 1959 Delta Rockwell 15200 series. I'm not certain what the exact model number is. It's fitted with a, I don't know if it's a number 33, but it's a 33 Jacobs Chuck, which is half inch. It's got a three phase, half horsepower original motor on the back. It's a nine lead motor. Three phase, I don't have three phase power in the shot, but I've been searching around and I found a solution. This is the solution. It's the KBAC series AC motor speed control. It's a power inverter to take single phase 240 volt and, can, and invert it to three phase power that this half horsepower motor will work on. So I'm gonna show you in this video how I wire up this power controller to this brand new drill press brand new to me, and then start drilling with it. It's a sweet piece of machinery. It was missing the depth stop indicator nuts, but I found kind of a solution. I got this, I got this 5 8 inch collar with a stop nut in there, and I'm gonna see how well that works. First things first, I gotta find a place to mount this giant controller. I've seen a couple of ideas from a couple of videos on YouTube already, uh, but it's about eight inches by five inches. And so I've got some scrap steel that I'm gonna weld up a nice little bracket. Uh, I'm gonna mount the bracket to the back of the motor. These last, these two lag bolts on this side, I'll just undo them and put the bracket up there. Uh, I'll eventually also get an LED work light. I'm just trying to figure out which one uh, I need for my, for my needs. So uh, I'm gonna leave a little extra room on the bracket for that work light, uh, but that's where we start. All right, so we're back at the drill press. Yesterday we had some unexpected visitors. I'll show you that right now, but basically... Uh, a, a scout party of bees, and there are hundreds of them, came into the shop. I guess that's what I get for cleaning it up because it looks like it's on the market. Thanks, Mike. Uh, they came in here and they were checking things out, so we had to deal with that. I mean, we didn't do anything other than let them be in here and check it out, but they wound up leaving and uh, I'm finally back at this. So I've got my bracket made up, just some 3 16 by 3 flat bar and some um, inch and a half, eighth inch flat bar that I welded together. It'll hang here. I'll mount a light up here later. But let's get rolling. So to mount the bracket to the existing motor mounts, uh, and it's so I'm just going to use the nuts. I took the washers off because the flat bar is going to act like washers. So let's do it. All right. So the bracket is mounted. Uh, I found out pretty quickly. You'll see in a little bit uh, that this bracket did not work. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much about that, other than it the VFD was just way too much weight to be mounted on the motor like that. I'm going to show you how I wired the VFD right now, and then I'll quickly show you my fix for the bracket mount and the weight distribution on the motor. All right, now I'm going to wire this baby up. I've got some 10-4, and I got some 10-3 wire, and uh, I got this at the one of the electrical supply houses around Austin. 10-4 because it's a three-phase motor, so it's got three hots in the ground, and 10-3 because I don't have three-phase power in the shop. I just have single phase, and it's two hots in the ground coming out of the wall. So that's gonna get wired to a plug. Single phase 220 is gonna come into this bad Jackson, and it's gonna convert it to Three phase 220, and I'm not even a little bit upset. So hopefully you can see this, but this is where the three hots come in 
from the motor. This is where the three, the two hots come in from the wall, and you got your leads down here, your ground for the motor, ground for the power coming in. Everything else stays the same except for these jumpers here because I bought a secondary on-off switch so I can turn on the controller and then start the motor bef before I actually use the tool. I can make sure the controller is working properly. So I'm going to just get everything wired up. That'll be that. T1 and T7 should be L1, and in my case, I'm going to ignore what this person did, which is fine, because the wires are marked, but my L1 is this black wire. Alright, I've got L1 wired. Now I'm looking for T8 and T2. Wire nuts. Yay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, she's plugged in. Flip on a power switch. Power, start it. It's working. The only big problem I see is that I've got my leads switched. It's turning counterclockwise. That's not right. So I'm gonna fix it. But it works. It is unplugged, clearly. My leads are switched. Spinning counterclockwise, it's not correct. Need to switch it. So as I understand it, all I have to do is switch the L2 and L3, and it'll spin the opposite way. Am I gonna lose that again? No big deal. Turn the power on. Indicator lights are good. Start it up, and she's spinning the right way, baby! Man, is that nice. The only thing I see immediately is that the motor's rocking back and forth, and I'm not sure what that's about. Could be because all this weight right here is pulling down on it, but we're gonna find out, so. Man, that is cool. Two things about this drill press. It's awesome, and it works, but, where I had it mounted on the motor, not gonna work. This thing weighs way too much for that motor and it bounces it up and down. So, check it out. Got that controller down here on the table and I'll show you. Way more stable. Pretty simple. I just welded a new base that attaches to the platform. I'll take you down here and show you in a second. Uh, but I use the same bracket because it'll, it will still allow me to mount the light that I want to mount later. Uh, I just attached it with some 2 inch quarter 20 volts. And now when I turn it on, I'll demonstrate. A little wobbly, but that's no problem. I might try to attach it to the drill press later on, but we'll find out after I use it just what modifications I need to make. The only one problem I see right now that could be a nuisance is the raised lower mechanism for the table is very close to the stand that I've made, and so we'll just see if that gives me any problems. But I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna turn the speed on to 30. As you can see, she's running. 
We're converting single phase 220 into three phase 220. Power and status indicators are green on my controller. And I can spin this baby up. It operates smooth. There's very little vibration. Right about 85%. That's 100%. That's really cool. You can just dial in the speed. So now when I'm drilling steel, I can go from drilling steel to wood with the turn of the knob. Pretty sweet. Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoy having this new drill press. Um, I really like old tools. They're just, they're just something about them. They're so cool, but stay tuned for more videos. I'm still working on this drill press. I'm still learning it. I'm still using it. Um, I've got another really, really cool tool that I got and you'll see it very, very soon. So if you have not already um, and you like what you saw, I ask that you please subscribe down below. Like the video, that really helps out, and leave a comment, love to hear from you. Uh, but stick around, I've got a bunch more stuff coming down the way, uh, a couple of, I got a media stand build series that's gonna be coming up here, and then a welding table video. So, thanks for checking it out, so uh, until next time.